Well, uh, Nigeria's ratings on the Transparency International Index uh, for the year 2016 remains the same at 130. So is that good news or bad news? I don't have the answers, but it seems our uh, in-house data analyst, Babajide Ogusawa, does. Babajide, thank you for joining us on the News at 10. Good evening, Amara. Well, let's talk about that uh, index, uh, which was released uh, earlier this week. Is Nigeria's rating improving, and how are other countries performing? So it all depends on how we want to look at it, and let's connect it to where we are today. And we can't talk about our rating without looking at, <coughs> excuse me, um, our religious um, differences and how it all connects to corruption. So not too long ago, Transparency International ran a survey yeah. and it then spoke to people about what it, their perception was about religious institutions. Now some of them, and some of us prefer to call them spiritual healers. Mm -hmm. And here's what the report showed. It says about a third of Nigerians believe religious institutions are corrupt. So let's put that on one side. Now, while we talked about spiritual healers, let's look at the original healers, those that have the mandate to heal, the doctors. Now, Transparency International also ran a survey and asked Nigerians what their perception about medical doctors were. They said 41% of medical doctors are corrupt. So perhaps we need a judge in this matter. So let's ask Transparency International, what they found out when they asked people, Amara, mm. about what their perception about judges were. 63% of Nigerians said judges are corrupt. So, Amara, perhaps we need the legislators to give us a new act about corruption. But here's what Transparency International and their survey showed. It showed Nigerians believed 73% of legislators are corrupt. So clearly this is the time to bring in the police. Now here's what the survey showed. 92% of Nigerians said the police are corrupt. So that's left with us. We need to take the action. However, the survey again showed if we do join a political party, Nigerians say 94% said political parties are corrupt. So that is really where we are today. But did all of this corruption start today? You know, it takes us back to what happened five decades ago, Amara. And so when Agu Irosi came in in January 1966, what was his reason? One word, corruption. 1975, when Muritala Mohammed came in, what was his reason? One word, corruption. 1983, when the general first came in, what was his reason? One word, corruption. And so all my life, Amara, the giant of Africa has been fighting corruption. So should we stop? No, we shouldn't. But again, we know even the giant tortoise doesn't make giant strides. And so let's look at our strides from 1999 under President Obasanjo. So then when Transparency International did their survey, the result was, the score was 1.6 over 10. Hmm. So yes, have we improved today based on Transparency International's report? Yes, we've improved. And if we look at the report consistently and we go into 2007 when we had President Yaradua, yes, the corruption score was better than it was in 1999. And we keep going. So today, Amara, we've got some good news and we've got some bad news. The good news is currently under President Buhari, Nigeria has gotten, based on Transparency International's report, mm -hmm. we currently have our best corruption score, our very best since 1999. That's the good news under President Barry. Our corruption score currently is the best. The it's bad the best news we've had so far. We've had since 1999. Mm -hmm. That's the best we've had so far. Mm -hmm. The bad news, Amara, is our best score, which we have right now, is 2.8 over 10. And that is still an F9. That is the problem we have today, and that is the summary of Transparency International's reports. It sounds like nobody is spared. I mean, you've called out almost all of the, you know, sectors that we <coughs> have, and it seems like corruption is like we're pushing against a brick wall. But what can we do to move up Transparency International's uh, rankings? So here's what I think. I think we need to really be more creative. Um, we're coming up with ideas on how we want to get ourselves out of corruption. So we spend a lot of time on monetary 
and um, physical policies. We now need to talk about corruption policies. We need to talk about corruption framework. And I'll give you an instance of what the Prime Minister of Nepal proposed in 2009, when then there was so much corruption at the airport. The proposal was everybody that works at the airport should wear trousers that have no pockets. Because apparently, it is harder for you to take a bribe when you, you have are, nowhere to put when it. you have nowhere to put it mm -hmm. so we have to come up and be creative with ideas on how we fight corruption however do we have a surplus of ideas currently no we don't especially even if we look at it from the constitution's perspective only one mention of ideas and over four mentions of corruption in the constitution so it simply means we need to start having corruption policies that are implementable and time-bound. And we need to also focus on creating frameworks that are very practical on how we fight corruption. Vajide, I wish this conversation could go on, but thank you so much for joining us on the News at 10. I appreciate your being here tonight. Thank you, Emma.